An FRCA OSCE round features two technical skills stations. Typically, there'll be one where candidates will be required to demonstrate a skill, then an additional station which will feature a more theoretical, question-based scenario used to test candidates' knowledge of a skill and its practical application. When entering the station, the examiner will likely be sat at a desk and will guide you through what is required from you and will communicate with you throughout the demonstration. Where a candidate is required to demonstrate a skill, this may be on a mannequin or model, or it may be on a live subject. If there is a mannequin or piece of equipment that you will be asked to use, this will be set up in the station. If there is a live subject, they may be lying on a couch or sat up, either on the couch or in a chair. The patient is played by a volunteer and candidates must be sure to treat them with the same care and attention that they would if they were a real patient. You may speak to the patient, but the station will be led by the examiner rather than the patient. In all instances, please ignore the equipment or patient until the examiner directs your attention to it, as they may have some initial questions before asking you to demonstrate the technical skill. In this video, we will illustrate how to approach a scenario where a candidate demonstrates a practical skill. Candidate 176? Yes. Good. Take a seat and we will start with a question. Okay. What preparations would you make before starting the tracheostomy tube change? I would make sure that the patient had been fasted for six hours. I would place the patient on 100% oxygen. I would prepare the equipment and the drugs required for an orotracheal intubation and I would check the patient's previous laryngoscopy grade. I would also then check the size and type of tracheostomy tube that the patient had in place, how long it had been there and if there had been any complications during its last change or its insertion. Demonstrate how you would carry out the tube change using only the equipment provided. A good candidate checks and describes the equipment they are given. The procedure is performed in an orderly manner. A good candidate describes what they are doing as they perform the procedure. A borderline candidate will be one who performs the procedure in a disordered fashion and does not clearly state what they are doing as they go. I would start by checking the new tracheostomy tube. Giving a commentary of your actions as you go helps to keep the mind focused on the task and candidates are more likely to complete the task without leaving out a stage. And I would fully deflate it. I would then remove the tube ties and make sure that I've fully suctioned the patient's mouth and oropharynx before I then remove the ventilator and deflate the cuff from the existing tracheostomy tube fully. I'd then remove this and insert the new tube firmly. I'd then inflate the cuff remove the obturator and ensure that I can ventilate the patient's lungs. I could then reattach them to the ventilator which will give me the capnography reading to ensure correct tube placement and I would then securely tie the tube into place. Okay, assume that you have tied the tube in. Take a seat, I have some further questions for you. A good candidate answers the question clearly. There is no penalty for hesitation. If a question asks for three answers and you are not sure whether your first three are correct, you can offer additional options. The borderline fail candidate is one who cannot provide the answer the examiner is expecting. The examiner can wait for a correct answer, but cannot prompt or give any hints. To what pressure should you inflate the cuff? Um, Take your time. 10 to 15 centimetres of water. The candidate has got the answer wrong, so will not get this mark. Tell me three ways you can confirm the tube is correctly in the trachea. I would look at the chest expansion and listen to the chest. 
I would attach capnography and I could look with a fibre optic bronchoscope. Despite the fact that the candidate has given four answers instead of the required three, they will still pass this question as they have included the answers the examiner is expecting. What important measures need to be taken in the patient with a new tracheostomy? It needs to be tied in securely so that it doesn't accidentally dislodge and I would administer humidified oxygen. In situations where more than one answer can be offered, the examiner will indicate when enough answers have been given. The good candidate gives answers in a logical order. The borderline candidate is more scattergun. However, as long as the correct answer is given, points will be awarded, irrespective of the order answers were given in. It's not uncommon for the station to finish before the allocated five minutes. Once the examiner has finished questioning you, you will not be permitted to go back to something you think you may have missed. The examiner cannot comment on a candidate's performance or on any other details of the scenario. If you feel that you have not performed as well as you would have liked, remember that there are no killer stations in the OSCE and no candidate passes every station. Once you have finished a particular station, try not to dwell on it. Put it out of your mind and move on to the next station.